The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour on this Thursday, the 7th of November. We're looking at the Dow at this point. I'm, I've got the bonds up. Let me just tell you, the bonds are up 17, 30 seconds after just a terrible move down. This is the area right here. With the, it's broken the, the both the weekly and the monthly uh, trend line, up up trend line. But I would just say this whole area and the 115 if it goes to 114, it's probably going to try, go down to 112. So I would say that this whole area where we are with the low today, um, I'm going to make it the 115s, the whole area of 115. If that doesn't hold on a three-day basis, in other words, you can close under it once and it can go above it. But if you close under it a second time or two days in a row, I think that's going to be a problem because the weight of evidence is showing that the weekly nine-period moving average is so far below the 14, the MACD histogram, the distance between the moving average is so great, and the so, so slow stochastic going down to 11% could very well go to single digits because the on-balance volume is, is really tanking. So it's going to be a process that says speed to the upside is imperative, and it makes the 120, 119 to 120 area absolutely crucial to, to try to tag. You don't have to hold it. You've got to try to get there between now and, say, Tuesday of next week. Uh, talking about next week, let me just say that I've got a webinar coming up. I, I've been wanting to do it for a little while. I just didn't know exactly how I would do it for the timing uh, because I needed to see what the result of the uh, election was, what the market response was, and then you need to wait a few days, and I, I'll go through that in a moment. No, I'll do it right now. Why it's so important, because, so this is the opening call, subscriber webinar, Thursday, November the 14th, 4 o'clock to 5.30 p.m., sectors and stocks for the next uh, market phase. And basically what I'll be doing is I'll be looking at, the, the, I know I talk about sector rotation uh, all the time. And uh, within the sector rotation, it's really important to see whether or not there's a continuation pattern with a high-level consolidation as we've had in the semiconductors or whether that's a pretty serious top with stocks like a Microsoft joining into the tech sector that are kind of been stalling, not doing badly, but they're just stalling, not making new highs, not breaking down. And what's taking over? You remember my my rationale was that as I've followed gold and silver, chase one another to the upside, and then they both come down together, I anticipated on a much on a macro level we would see the S and P 500 lead the way, make new highs, and at some point the market just has to recognize that the small caps are really important to move as well. You want them to move in sync. That means that the big caps can have a bit of a rest while the small caps move upside. We have seen that. I said there's a relationship between the XLF, which is the S&P, the money center banks, the big the big stocks, although Berkshire Hathaway, Hathaway is there, and it's really not a bank, although I guess it's one of the biggest banks in the world in some way. Anyway, so you, you needed to see the XLF move to new highs, but you needed to see the KRE, which is the regionals. And now with the Fed and higher rates, Tommy was talking about that a little earlier in his show, Higher rates do impact very negatively the small caps, but at a certain point, if the small caps can generate their own momentum based on a change of structure, infrastructure, change of the way um, the market is perceived by fund managers and it can build up its own momentum, it'll ignore some negatives. And that's why I say that's the relationship I'm looking at there so that there should be a catch-up trade. And so far, there has been in the IWM. And I'll be talking about that more in a week. But what I do recommend is we are getting into position. Remember when I did my July webinar, I said these are the positions we wanted. We got them. 
And now I'm saying these are the positions we either want to add to or we want to look at. And I'm even saying that the DBA, which is the DBA Grantra Fund, which we've been in for ages and done so well, I, I might want to just take them, I finally take money out there and put it somewhere else. Um, because I think we're getting a rotation of other sectors as well. And I'll be looking at former favorite big losers that are perhaps possibly becoming big winners, analyzing weekly time frames because it's so important. The weekly charts, that's what I'd said for ages now. I've been saying the weekly charts look fantastic. We've got sell signals, even sell mode and some of the indices on the short side, uh, on the on the short term side. But those weekly charts are powerful, and you can see this is what it means, that when they pull back and that nine-period moving average, which I'll be talking about holes above the 14, you can spring to the upside. We even had that in the um, intraday in the E-mini a little while ago. So uh, a number of things. I'll be demonstrating the 914, talking about some of the Chapel Wave technical tools. I've got lots of webinars up. You get the webinars for free. But I recommend if you're thinking of signing up, sign up soon because – I've, we've started implementing positions for what I, I consider to be the potential for this next phase. And then I'll answer questions live as they come up in the webinar. I think it's really important to do that. All right, let's get out of that, move it away. And let me just show you here. So the bonds uh, and up 17, 30 seconds, that's nothing. You want to see the bonds spiraling. I'd like to see a big move up and then a failure pattern that says, ah, no, that was a fake out. And that failure pattern doesn't take out the low but makes a new recovery high over a period of, I'd say, five to seven sessions going into maybe Friday a week. That'll be really important for bonds. All right, let's get back to our story. I don't even remember where I was. Uh, let me just run this quickly. So the Dow has made a new all-time high today. It's up 32 at 43,760. It's already gone to 43,810. The S&P, S&P right now, there's an all-time high of 31 at 59.60. The QQQQ, I think I did that. That's right. That's the way I got into this. QQ all-time high right now, uh, up five and a half at 51, 511. IWM uh, was a little weaker earlier, and that's good. Now it's coming back a little bit. It's down just 48 cents at 236.76. That's the Russell iShares. Oh, I got into gold. So gold is... Um, doing nicely here, but it's a high-level consolidation. The dollar, now this is going to be very important, dollar is a spectacular move to new recovery high, and now it's pulling back a little bit, not a little bit, a lot, down 0.83 at 104.31. Um, that's going to be something to watch. That could be a, a, a almost like a rogue wave, spike to the upside. We'll be looking at that over the next few days, uh, a few sessions going into Monday or Tuesday. I must get back to the bonds. Bonds are still, they're really not doing much. Now they're only up a half a point. And we want you to look at crude oil. Crude oil right now is trading down 69 cents to 71.01. You can see that Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone of the weekly chart. Whew, it's really tough for crude oil to garner any uh, sustained strength. So here we are looking at, um, at the market. And one of the things that I'm looking at here is, I was going to talk about this earlier on. Look, PAVE, this is the Global Infrastructure and Development ETF. All-time highs. I don't know why the Biden administration didn't talk about these things. You've got a lot of work going on in the infrastructure that's that's been fabulous. You had the market at all-time highs. I don't know. All right, I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, uh, Tiger Technician's Hour. And I've got a lot of requests, and I'll go through them when I get back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, we're back and we're looking at, we just get this, I want to do, okay. yeah, so PAVE, that's the P-A-V-E is the symbol and it is the Global X U.S. Infrastructure Development uh, ETF. You know, I meant to check to see, but I'm just going to say, I had spoken about Alcoa. This is really important. This is part of, um, this is part of the core cyclical area that we've looked at for not years, but decades. Alcoa goes back. I, uh, just you know, to maybe the early, the mid 1900s, as a company, and it hit 98.08 in March of 2022, plummets all the way down to the 20. Uh, what was that? 27 one? 23.07 uh, uh, back in October of 2023. And now it's gone peak A, very bumpy stair step move, peak B, very sharp pullback. Remember, this is still going to higher highs, even though you pull back, as long as you don't take out the initial low. And then it goes to a C. And that C is where we are currently. And I, I we don't have this. I've spoken about I know I've got some su subscribers who are actually in it because I've always done the analysis and they like the analysis. For some reason, I just, we went into other areas that have done well. Um, so, okay, look, here's the weekly chart, makes this cup formation, the dreaded H becomes a cup. That's a really important technical indicator that I, a te technical tool that I use. And then lo and behold, it makes this move in the weekly chart. I'm using this just to show you that there's been very a very constructive and steady move to the upside in many of uh, Caterpillar. This is another, Alcoa is another. These are called, these are cyclical. So 45, 48 was the high back in uh, May. Uh, it turns down, it goes to 27.12, almost cut in half back August the 5th, then starts to move. There's your H pattern that goes to a cup formation. I drew in the Chapman Wave inside wedge target uh, resistance line. It went to a peak D at 42.95, three points under the previous high. Pulls back, but that nine-period moving average, even though it dipped and went underneath for three out of four sessions, it closed underneath the nine-period moving average. It did not go pink. It held green. What a fantastic indicator. Look at the MACD. It looks very weak. Look at the, the relative strength. was very weak. Look at the, MAG, the stochastic. Makes a dreaded H pattern. Fails 
visibly and goes down to the uh, 20% area. The on-balance volume did start to move up, which is a good sign, good divergence. And now you've got in exactly the time frame, it's it's a day one day late to this. I chose this particular peak right there as the midpoint, the plumb line, technical tool. I have webinars on this, how to gauge your left side, right side price symmetry where the number of bars on the left can equal the number of bars, but you don't always go to the exact low or if it's on the upside, the exact high. But look at this. This is the one I chose and it went to that. And you had the chain wave inside wedge target repellent line hitting exactly. So here you are at a new recovery high, hits uh, 46.50 today. This is exactly where you say, okay, you've reached your target. What's next? Well, is this a brand new leg A or is it an E? Because the nine period moving average didn't go negative, so it looks like a continuation pattern. Well, there are other techniques that I use in which to decide it. But what I normally do is I just say, hey, just for your information, mister, that's an E, but it could. Don't think that that's the end of a move. And to think that it's just the beginning of a move, that's just a little bit, that's, that's a little bit uh, too anticipatory. So what I'm looking at is I put it in, and then I see what the technical indicator is. Now at this particular point, you don't want it to close under 44. And you want to see it pull back maybe a little bit and then start another leg. If it gets to a G slash C, you can't go to H, it goes to a D. That completes your move. That's what you want to see. And here you are with a breakout pattern leg D in the weekly. Why did I want to spend time on this? Because it's telling me that all those stories, all those e emails that I keep getting about the uh, this is the end of the world, this is 1929 again, I just don't see that right now. I see something quite positive. Look, yes, Caterpillar, all-time high. The, as we speak, it went to 418.50. That's a leg G. There it is, G slash C. Why is it a G slash C? Because this looks like A, B, and it looks like a C. In fact, I would take away the G to say, ah, there's no chance monthly charts don't usually make a G. They go to Ds or Es or F or higher. So I'm just leaving it there. And isn't this very good? A gap up and it holds the gap. Went to a high high, but now it's pulling back a little bit. I want you to talk about that because these are infrastructure things that should have been discussed if there was a coherent um, articulation of the economy. The uh, Democrats could have had talking points that were right cogent and right there you could have shown charts there were other things that they were just totally out of lunch on. But this, I think, is a very important thing. Same as same as the Republicans. Uh, you know, there were certain things that they, they, they discussed. They could have actually done a lot of other things, but they got a clean sweep, so they didn't have to do anything, actually. I have to admit, when you, when you think of uh, Trump, I mean, uh, he, he just never let up. He was relentless. And that, I think, is... You know, that's, a, that's quite amazing. The energy that he had, whew, that's amazing. All right. So in the meantime, let's go to um, let's go to the charts. Look at, we looked at Caterpillar. Now I want to get back to questions that I have. Uh, let me just get to them. Oh, yeah, the TLT. So I discussed that in terms of the, the bonds. You've just gone to a leg G, the trough G at the bottom here. There could be an alternative count. Just for the moment, I'll keep it as a G. And what I wanted to show you is, there's a pattern. Oh, I, I'm going to have to do this now. I'll, I'll do this now because I don't really want to do that um, right here. Even though tomorrow's Technical Friday, I want to just get some things out the way. I want to show you that. So there's a pattern that I talk about all the time. It's called the falling axe. It's where prices go up, 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 up. And then they come down, they make lower highs, much lower lows. And then all of a sudden, they find support. And if they take out that upper downtrend line, the expanding, declining, expanding cone formation, too many words, that's really positive. It can go all the way back to the top. Well, you can do the same thing, but invert it. I just turned the, I turned the pattern upside down. You go to higher lows and much higher highs. And all of a sudden, you stall. The dreaded H is, is a, a short-term example of that where it goes to only a peak A and the, or a B and then fails and takes out the left side low. 
But every once in a while, you've got a price that goes to a D, a C or a D, not a B, but a C or a D. It actually completes a buy mode, and then it comes down, and it takes out this upside down, the, the falling axe formation. It takes out the lower rising trend line, and that says, uh-oh, be careful. But if it's already gone to a D, that's usually a sign that says you've used up so much energy to the upside, but you've also used up a lot of uh, short-term energy, and that means you don't necessarily have to take out the left side low. In the TLT, that would be in the 80, I forgot to type that in. That would be, the TLT is the bonds, right? The 20, I shares 20 year treasury bond for 87.34. So that's really a key level to watch. So it's exactly between that level, 87.34, and where we are right now at 90.98. This is the area where you've got to start to see some kind of uh, support level that says you can go back to test the upper trend line that was a support, now resistance. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
Hi, Rob. So I had a question about Clean Spark and CLS Pays. The simple training at thirteen oh eight, thirteen dollars and eight cents, up eight cents right now. And um, so the question for me is immediately just a one glance, and it's already got peak A, peak B, peak C. Then a peak D with a sharpest pullback. Remember, the fourth highest peak is where other things can happen. You've got to be ready. The yellow light goes on. doesn't mean you say you have to change anything, but you've got to be ready. Well, it went to D and then it went to an E. And then that E became the sharpest pullback where the 9 period moving average actually went pink. What does it do in three and one, two, three? In three sessions, it goes from that low and it goes up and it makes a new recovery high above the 200 period moving average which is your magnet line. It's like it keeps wanting to come there, go above it, then below it, above it, below it. Uh -huh. And now what it's done is the MAGD is just cross positive. The relative strength, the gray line right there, is kind of, it's come back very nicely. The stochastic's very weak at 39%. The on balance volume is just pathetic right down here. That always makes me a little nervous. <coughs> Excuse me. But you got your peak E back in March, way up in the 24s, and it got more than cut in half, obviously. It went down to eight. I would say that that's a, a slice and a half. Uh, and what happens is it starts a new move to the upside. And this week, for the first time, the nine-period moving average, and we've still got it two days to go, today and tomorrow, has crossed positive. But you haven't got an official crossover yet because you have to wait for Friday at four. Stochastics improved at 32%, but very weak. On balance volume still weak. Nine period moving has a long way to go, and the 200 period moving at about 11.20. That's that's uh, been a magnet line as well. So the question is, what do I think? Monthly chart at a peak E up in the 24s, and of course it plunged down to the eights as we've discussed. And now what it's doing is it's rallying with a green candle. But as the month has just begun, first kind of week of first full week, what is it, of uh, um, November, what we're looking at is within the context of the chart, it does custom microgrids. Now, I'm not sure, is this the microgrid, microgrid that takes, that's a charging stations or is a microgrid for something else? I don't know. It says custom microgrids. Uh, dedicated to helping customers optimize their energy usage through the use of microgrid technology. So that's something different. That is not the uh, uh, charging stations. I think anything to do with energy right now is in a sweet spot because it, you, we're going to need it more and more no matter what happens because you're going to have more and more usage of electric vehicles, etc. So I like it on a fundamental basis, just uh, in the story. I like the story, Okay. The story doesn't mean to say the chart has to follow. When I look at this move early in 2024, as it went from the sixes all the way to the 24s, it looked to me from the wicks of the candle that it was a story stock. Then it had a show me a digestive dreaded H going to a lowercase m formation that said, show me if this is accurate. And it said, no. And it gapped down and it traded underneath for weeks, underneath the 1380-ish uh, level before four weeks ago, it went into the into the gap and pulled back and now it's gone and it's full the gap. That's important. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, it's got a story, it's got a chart pattern that's improving. Look, it's in the proving stage right now. I don't like these single moves up They just suddenly go and then don't have the wick follow through on the upside like a weekly chart. Look, each one. Rally, show me, failure pattern. Rally, show me, failure. Now it's the, almost the opposite where it fills the candle and goes to the top of the candle. I like that. I don't know if this is a, an old F or a brand new A. It doesn't matter. What you've got is 12.22 is the 200 period moving average. If again it goes under 12, you've got to be careful. So make 12 your, I, I suspect you're in it. Um, and with that said, I'm going to jump the gun a little bit and say, if you are in it, I would just hold this as a long term. You, you like longer term positions. I like this as a longer term position. But you also have to handle it. And I'm just saying any shorter positions that you have, if it closes under 12, I take a little bit off. OK, now, the main thing is this. 
that gap, when it gets filled, if it gets filled, this ugly candle of the week of the 2nd of August with a high of 1805 and a low of 1324, if at any point, going all the way into December, if there is a move, a closing weekly, a weekly close above 15, no, sorry, 16. No, it's not, it's, it's 15. No, I'm going to skip 1580. I'm going to say above 16, above 1610. I want to see it actually go into the 16s. I prefer a close, but if it gets there, that's really important. That's going to help them. Weekly MACD stochastic will probably be about 48 to 53 percent. That those are all good signs. So I like it. I don't. I'd be a little nervous. If, give me a yell if it starts to trade under 12, and we'll have to look at it again. But right now, as a longer term kind of building a position because it once hit 24, a stock like this in the right, in, I wouldn't say exactly the sweet spot, but it's in a, an area that's kind of, I think, favorable right now. Anything to do with energy, uh, electric energy, I think that that's going to look good. So, yes. So, yeah, I like the trade. I'm going to have a look at it myself. Uh, it looks a little too, too volatile right now for me to feel comfortable uh, with a spike that it's going to hold and not fill the gap it's, uh, sometime soon. But right now it's acting very well. Hope that helped you. Next question came in. Could I look at Oclo? Oh, oh, I haven't looked at Oclo for a long time. Oclo. Ooh, look at that. This is also in the clean energy. Oh, we're in the energy phase right now. Uh, Oclo Inc., clean energy, also uh, nuclear startup. Oh, okay. Um, went to a peak G in Chapman Wave. Pull back sharply. The nine is way above the 14. It's trading at 24.13. Had a spectacular, I haven't updated this, spectacular move going from the fives all the way to the 27 area. And now uh, this is a leg B. It will be a peak B if this week it doesn't go above uh, 28 to 12. That's a long way to go. Oh, look at this. It already has 2.39, up 2.3, up 10% today alone. I like this. So Oakland Energy, uh, let me just have a look. So I always like to, if anybody mentions a nuclear, I like to go to the stock that we have. Uh, this is Uranium Energy Corporation. Oh, look, it almost has the same consolidation right there. Yeah, so that's up 41 cents to 7.95. It's broken the trend line resistance, line period moving average. Okay, I'm going to give this a, a go ahead. I'm going to say yes. Uh, where's support? Oh, where's support? Support is in the 18s, anywhere in this area, uh, right here. It mustn't break 80. If it breaks 18 on the short term basis, that's a problem. I'll be right back. Dows of 29, Dows of Trap, Tiger Ignition South. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, I just want you to look, this is Palantir Technologies Inc. Develops uh, data fusion platforms. I had this left side, right side price time match in the monthly chart. Uh, which went to the exact low at 527 back in early 2023. The high was 45 round number high in January of 2021. And look, to the month, it had exactly that level 45, took it right out. This is a leg E, I'm calling it at least for now, a leg E in the monthly chart, um, a leg E in the, it could be an alternate count. Let me just double check, is that a penny higher? 4438, 44, I think it's the same. 4438, 40, ah, 39. Okay, it's not. So we've got this in leg E in the uh, in the weekly chart. Now my problem here is that I don't know if this is a brand new uh, leg to the upside. So many stocks have done this, or if it's an F. Now I want you to take just a moment to do this right here. So this is a fantastic company. Palantir Technologies, diverse data fusion platforms, etc. But at the same time, it is extended. There's no question about it. On a visual basis, it doesn't know it. We do it because we can see it. But I have this that I've been talking about for a little while, this uh, Chapman Wave Dark News Index. And it gives you a left side high of March of 2024 to um, all-time high in the Dow. It's based on the Dow. July, sorry, the July the 18th. I don't want to go through the internal highs and internal lows, uh, even the internal low and the uh, residual low that was the, the starting point for this big move up. But look at the time frame. That's all this white horizontal line is. It's time frame. It's not the height. Even though I had the height, I had this going to the uh, to the 11th, I believe. Yep, 11, 11, 20, 24 to match the time sequence of this particular top. Well... Today is this is the seventh. We've got Friday, then a holiday, two days, and the eleventh comes in uh, on Monday. Well, if this is an A, a leg A up in the Dow on the daily basis, you can't get a peak D until about two weeks later. I mean, even if it's up and down every single day, because look, well, maybe you could. If today's an update, which it is with a higher high, that means tomorrow is immediately down, no new high. So that's your peak A. Then Monday starts leg B, Tuesday's peak B, Wednesday's leg C, Thursday's peak C, and leg D starts Friday. That's just every other day has an alternate new high and no new high. New high, no new high. Um, that is uh, the bar does, it takes out the previous day's high and then doesn't the next day. That takes you to the following week. That's the quickest we could be. So that's two Mondays time. So I'm not even going to worry about that. I'm just saying this has been in the back of my mind that there's this price match. 
we did get the chap we've inside low and the residual low. that's why we were buying so many new positions but at the same time there are a lot of stocks that have broken out even as i say the Dow. even the, look look at this spx.x yes oh, i did the wrong chart I always forget to change charts right there there it is s and p look that's a brand new move to the upside is that an e because you did go to the pink in the nine period moving average and you got a fabulous reversal in the stochastic is still lousy at 54 percent on balance volume is very good um, uh, MACD did turn up and doesn't usually cross positive and immediately go down and I'm just saying there's a chance that we've started especially today's action not dropping two three or well, days yeah but not dropping two three hundred points to have a, a just a breather of the last hour's gain and then come back the next day to a new high this is this is like a this has all the characteristics of a an upthrust that is really a takeoff phase, like the, that rocket where it shoots up and then it needs all that power to keep going. This is the power we needed, and you gapped up in the S&P. Look at the SPLV. This is the one I kept talking about for ages and ages. This is the low volatility S&P 500 low volatility fund. It's still in a leg C in the monthly chart. It's at a peak E in the weekly, and it hasn't yet made a new all-time high of 73.33, one, one penny above the previous high of the 15th of October. So I'm looking at this, I'm saying the Fed could do a little damage today. Usually markets don't change with Fed unless it's already in a, di a directional change. The tide has changed, and the Fed comes in and assassinates whatever the move is. It's hardly ever that the Fed, once I can recall buying the DXD for subscribers intraday, the two times short the Dow at exactly the, the right moment intraday when the Fed started speaking, I sent out this thing saying short, and that was right. But other times, it just doesn't happen. I'm looking at this favorably, and that's the reason why I want you to give it about a week and then have a webinar to say, this is what we're looking at. Look at the way the nine period moving average in the... Um, Look at this. The 9 period moving average in the 10-minute chart went, the e mini went negative at 7 o'clock. And since then, it's green and it's expanding and the price is expanding up 35 points. I don't want to fight that. Let the Fed tell us when to fight it. And so far, we haven't heard from them today, but we will after 2 o'clock. All I can say is I like what I'm seeing. We added to our positions. We've got positions to add to on any pullback today. We want to pull back to add to some positions. New positions, I just said, I have to skip the chance today to get any new position, even though this is the perfect time for it. Because you remember yesterday what I was saying, if the shorts, if the market closes at the high and the shorts intraday kept saying, we've got to wait for a pullback, wait for a pullback, and then it closes almost at the high, and they say, oh, my God, i got to wait overnight. And then overnight, it's just a, like a little, there's no pullback at all. And the next morning. They are in fear. You can imagine if you were short going into the open yesterday and you were still short and you haven't covered. Uh, and this is now a leg D in the weekly chart for the S&P. There it is, leg D. It has a target on the upside for a trend line target of, if everything works out, of 6,073. Uh, and we're trading right now at 59.66. So all I can say is, this is exactly the kind of action that I would expect in a new upthrust takeoff phase in the market. It gives you no room. Even it gave you a little. It gave you a little bit of a bounce on the move that in September when it started up, but it didn't in August. Look at that August move. It gave you a fabulous takeoff from the 51, 5,119.26 low on the 5th of August. And look at that. A, a, a Chapman wave inverted Roman candle never took out the base, took out the top, and then it moved up so quickly. And that's what happens in these takeoff phases. It doesn't give the, the bears a chance to get out. And that's what we're going to see at the end of the day today. Does this either hold the gains or even if it pulls back, does it still, it's just a minor pullback and then tomorrow we're back up again? Or how does this work at this particular point? You've got all your triggers for a move that says, this could be um, 
This could be a brand new daily move to the upside, just a continuation phase in the weekly and monthly. I've got, I cannot ignore that. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Yeah, just to answer a question from a subscriber, what we're looking at right now is we're adding positions at this particular point. Why? Because if this is a takeoff phase, and today is really important, so far it's done exactly what you would want in takeoff phase, you want to be in the positions. I don't want to be chasing anything. I I, I don't mind chasing when it's just the start of a takeoff phase because that's when you just have to get in because it's too late to get in the next day very often. But at the same time, these positions are going to have stops, a very important stops, and those stops are going to say, I'm wrong because it's taken us out. That's all. And we're in the position. And we, now that we've got gains on them, we can raise the stops. So it's still a profitable position. So this is BRPH Gallery Digital. Um, BRPHF is the symbol. Now, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is a breakout to the upside. But I would go with the monthly, which says leg D. Uh, sorry, the weekly, which says a leg D. So all I can do in this particular case, at 50, I don't even know what they do, 16.000. So this is a... A pink slip one. Okay, we're looking at um, up a dollar fourteen today. Yeah, this is really good action. All I can say is I like it. The weekly charts nine over the fourteen. Monthly charts good. 
making higher highs, higher lows. All I can say is on the longer term, you're talking about longer term, if it takes out uh, 11.50, give me a year, we've got to look at it again. And that's all I can say. So far, it's doing very well and making higher highs and higher lows, and that's good. So I'll do a little bit more work maybe tomorrow, and I've written it down. So let me just wrap this up because um, I can see my monthly chart. Okay, so um, I've got my webinar coming up, and I think it's really timely for this webinar. Um, let me just go there. This is opening call subscriber webinar Thursday the 14th, 4 o'clock to 5.30 p.m. Sectors and stocks for this next market phase. Really important. And the only other thing I want to say, Steve Rhodes recorded his show earlier. I'll do the news right now. Then it's Steve's show, a wonderful show, of course. And uh, in the meantime, we, I want to see that by the end of the day, the Dow hasn't dropped 200 points. I like what it's doing right now. Have a wonderful session. I'll see you.